Hey guys, welcome back to another video for the Dying Light and Dead Island series. My name is Jason, the creator of the mod, and I'm here with another video showcasing the latest launcher. So if you haven't seen, uh, there is a new version of the launcher that was released about a week ago. Uh, I've been slowly ironing out some of the bugs so that way I could do this video uh, with any changes made to the interface uh, so that when I did this video, you know, it would stay relevant for longer. I do apologize. I know the other video stayed... Uh, a older version of Unity for a longer time, uh, and so I am going to try to do better on updating these videos as we go, but hopefully we won't need to overhaul many things uh, based on your guys' feedback. So, uh, first and foremost, when you download the launcher, you can grab the launcher either from the Discord, from the Nexus. Um, once you download the launcher, you're going to extract that. The first thing you'll see is the PDF, um, and so this basic PDF is a summary of most of the features, kind of what it does on the back end uh, and some of the general pur purpose information uh, from both the mod uh, manual and new things that I've added uh, to the launcher itself. So this is the third edition of the launcher. So first we had the Python launcher, uh, then we had the Unity launcher, and now we have the Dart launcher. Uh, and so Dart is a new language that I've been playing in and I actually really enjoy it. So I wanted to give you guys a new tool using that new system. And so uh, this is what that looks like. Uh, I need to actually back up a step um, and show you guys the updater. So first and foremost, uh, as updates come out for the launcher, you know, you can always check in the bottom corner here. This is version 3.1.5. Uh, if a new version comes out, let's take a step back here and go to the updater. Um, when you run the updater, it's going to just check the online version and you can always press the update button uh, very quickly to make sure you have the latest version of the launcher. What it's going to do is basically uh, download the file and extract it into this launcher folder um, so that you're running the latest version. So when you hit launch, it will go ahead and close that out and kind of reset all of those files underneath. Um, basically nothing is stored inside of that folder except the executable itself. Um, so the new location for all that data and the reason I have it open is that documents I am Legion launcher is where you can find all of the data that's being downloaded, the config INI which has been around since the days of the Python launcher which allows you to just basically very quickly see um, the information about what is being set on the back end stored. Um, with this latest version of launcher I've poured a lot of love into this thing to try to polish out some of the issues that you guys have reported over the years um, with the Python and then the uh, Unity launcher. I've really tried to iron out a lot of those things and make this as fluid as possible. One of those being uh, tutorials. So there at the start, you saw that um, basically we had a starter tutorial. Let's circle back to that. As always, um, the first thing you want to do when you jump in is head over to the settings and make sure that these uh, games have been added. The latest version of the launcher is going to go and try to find these games automatically on your system by using the registry. It basically just checks to see if you have Steam or Epic Games or GOG installed. If you have those installed, it uses their paths uh, to try to find these games and get them set up automatically. The hope here is, is that once it has that, it actually goes a step further and it also gets the save game locations. So the save games have always been a pretty critical part of this mod on making sure that you have everything backed up prior to running the mod. So that way, if in the event of official updates or you know, outdated mods used with your save game, at least you have a backup so you don't lose your gameplay. So you can go through each one of the games here and just make sure everything is set up correctly. Hopefully it was able to find everything on your system. Uh, if you want to change your platform, you can go here and select which platform you have this game on. Uh, a lot of the games don't actually have, you know, Epic Game or GOG support. So like, for example, the older Dead Islands, they're Steam only. Uh, but for like the newer system uh, or the newer games, uh, Dying Light 2, uh, and actually I remember I updated it to where it's not even going to show GOG as a list uh, unless you have it installed. So um, some of these games may actually have the GOG version. Uh, it's been a minute since I wrote the code, but um, if you have GOG, it will show up in this list as well. Um, so you can change any of these settings for the launcher, and when you press the play button on the main menu, it will try to launch the game using this. 
I have some great fallback code in there to where, you know, it should run the game either way. Um, but please be aware that I am not injecting anything at runtime. So you can always just run the game however you want to run the game. Uh, I will just mention that the whole purpose of this launcher is to check for updates to make sure that you're not going to corrupt your save game. That's really where all this effort has gone into is, is to make sure that you don't corrupt your save games and that you can play knowing that the game is going to work. Uh, so the next tab that we're going to go to is the general tab. So I did get in support for 14 different languages. Uh, for those of you that have been using the older launchers, hopefully this is a big step uh, to allow you to uh, use the launcher and have that information uh, to where you can use the launcher. And, and I'm hoping that it's at least uh, somewhat close. Uh, basically, I used AI to try to translate these different languages for me. I do have a really good system in place for getting this this stuff online. I do have all of this on a uh, Excel spreadsheet. So if you are using one of the languages and you think that the translations are garbage, please just let me know that. Uh, I have no way of knowing that. Uh, and there is a process set up so that you can help um, you know, it, it, correct those if you're willing to. Like, if you want to help the translations, if you want to help the community uh, get better translations, just reach out to me on Discord and let me know that. And uh, and it's greatly appreciated. I'm sure the community will appreciate it as well. Um, if you selected a different language, all of the tutorials will also have a different language, uh, so you can you know set that first and then go through and 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 you know, go through the different tutorials. I am hoping that the tutorials help you guys out. It should give you a basic understanding of all of the different menus. I've created a tutorial for every page um, on the launcher. So uh, hopefully it does help. Uh, if you want to see the main screen one when you first launch, all you have to do is hit this reset all tutorial progress uh, and it will load back when you go here. Um, so to dive through the options a little bit more, you can set the master volume for the audio at any point. There are also the hotkeys on your keyboard uh, to increase and lower. Uh, and last is the data storage. So on the data storage side, uh, you can actually see where all of this data is being set. Uh, but basically, if you run into any hiccups, usually the fastest thing you can do is to go into this folder. Um, you can press this open data folder and it'll help you out. Um, but basically under this data folder, for example, the mod data, this is where it's downloading all of the files for each game. Uh, if any, at any point you run into any issue, I would highly recommend just deleting the file uh, for this game and just letting the launcher re-download it. It could be something as simple as a failed extraction or you know something minor that happened on your system. Uh, right now these are empty, but as we switch to the different games, it will go through. So Dying Light the Beast has been released. Uh, there is a new version of the mod for this game with modules, with events. Hopefully you come check it out. Um, but basically as you switch to each one, it will download these files uh, and get these files set up in here. So basically uh, all the installer files are in here. We have run into before where on some people's systems for whatever reason, uh, these files get sticky. They don't get deleted. They don't get updated properly. Um, so going in and hitting delete on this folder, you know, at any point, uh, you know, you can either relaunch the application or sim sim just simply switch. Uh, well, it looks like it did actually cause that to have a problem. So we're just basically going to relaunch. So if you delete that folder, just relaunch the application and it will go through and download those files again. But it is dependent on the version number, at least uh, it is pulling it from that location. So if you reload, it should fix any issues and reset all of that data. Okay, sorry, that was a quick aside. I know that some uh, uh, some users have had little issues here and there with that, so I just wanted to get that into the video. So once you've gotten to this point, you have not actually installed the mod. So the mod is not installed, the launcher is set up. And so, you know, the first most important part for, you know, playing the mod and, and having all the features is done. Uh, but now let's dive into actually installing the mod. So this first tab is going to be the installer. I do hope that the new uh, tab system here that lets you read all the different ones. Hopefully this helps. If you want to close it, you know, leave it open. Hopefully this allows you to kind of see what each thing is. Um, but we're going to dive into the mod installer first. Uh, so for the mod installer, basically 
the way I have this set up is that the difficulties is always the primary part of the mod. Uh, so this is where I've gone through and balanced things for my play style and how I hope that the community will enjoy. Um, you can go through and select any of these different difficulties at any point in the game. So if you went in and you did the crazy thing of selecting insanity first uh, and you realize very quickly that that is not meant for the casual player, uh, you can come back and relaunch the launcher at any point and select any different difficulty and reinstall. As you go through here, you'll see different things like modules. So each of these will have their own description and you know you can always check the mod document kit documentation for more information uh, but basically it should give you a quick summary underneath um, and I'll have more information added to the readmes uh, for each mod as we go um, but basically for example you know things like volatiles be gone hopefully that's as transparent as possible of it just removes volatiles from the game or at least in dying light the beast a lot of the code is baked into the game um, and so I'm still working to get access to the full game but at this time you know it does the best it can to try to remove volatiles from the game doesn't necessarily mean based on the difficulty that you've selected uh, that it will get rid of all of them but it does as good of a job as it can um, for example the events the events are going to be more like they're modules but they're a bit more so basically these are uh, world altering uh, events that you can select that do more in the game than a module so for example like the winter slaughterland it retextures everything to use the winter shader um, the low gravity effects um, which you can turn on and it will affect all physics throughout the game uh, hyper mode which you know multiplies the physics on most attacks uh, and then the seven 7,670 days later, which is based on the movie and book series 28 Days Later, um, which is basically removes all special infected to allow you to fight against hordes of biters and virals only. Um, and so as you select, go through and select the different ones, it will let you know if they're not compatible. So say, for example, all of four of these events are compatible with each other and all of these modules are compatible with each other. So when we go down here to the summary, it will summarize all of the different things that we have installed. If you go over to the actual install path for the beast, so if you go into the beast folder, it'll be ph underscore ft source and you can see here that we do not have mods installed. The data zero, data one are the primary files. Let me slide this over, I apologize. And so when we run this installer, it's gonna go through and install each one of those files and it will add them to our folder here. I did notice that for some reason, it did actually just do a bug on our thing here. So actually this is, uh, I guess, fortuitous. I'm assuming this is where it actually didn't install correctly. So here's actually a good example. So I'm going to have to double down on my code to make sure that this stuff sets up correctly, but this is a good time for this, I guess. So in this case, um, let's close the launcher. It's more than likely where I did kind of, uh, I switch the games uh, instead of closing the full launcher out um, and it installed half of it and then probably canceled the process halfway through setting the files back up. So it's downloading the files, it's extracting the files. So rarely do you actually get to capture it mess up on video that's nice so that's a great example of where it messed up so it should have all of these folders and uh what i'll do is, is i'll add some checks in the future here uh to where it verifies that each one of these are actually found before uh running the installer and clearly shows you that it didn't install it properly because it did say that it installed but it didn't actually install so little things like that as we go um little gotchas uh you got to mess with the software enough to try to break things uh and so you catch stuff as you go everybody's experience and what they click on is a little different so please bear with me as i continue to go through and get these things improved and set up um it does take time uh, as a solo developer. So the last thing I'm gonna include as part of this video, I know it's running a little long, is that the save game tool has been brought to this one as well. You can run through the tutorial, but basically 
the quick summary of this is, is that even if it says vanilla, that doesn't mean necessarily it's vanilla. If you've installed mods and you know you're playing mods on a save game, please just go in here and say modded, whatever works for you. But basically the, uh, the, the summary of this is, is that if you have mods on your save games and you're playing mods and then you remove mods at any point or your mods become outdated or the game gets updated and mods haven't been updated, you can absolutely destroy your save game. It, it, it's happened to many, many players and it's one of the things that slowed me down on my progress as a modder uh, because no one wants to release content that just wipes out people's you know hard earned you know work inside of a game uh, and so if you've got modded content you know you've installed mods and you have save games that you want to protect I highly recommend just going in here selecting the different uh, save games and creating a backup it doesn't matter you know how many times you do this uh, it, it if you never use the backup that's great um, but it does help to at least have that backup in case you need it. The game or the application, the launcher will automatically create backups now um, when there's a new version out and there's not a compatible version of the mod. So in example, this morning, they released a new version of the game and there was not a version of the mod. There is now. Uh, and so because of that, uh, it did create a backup so that we can back up to that point before it updated. Um, and then... Uh, I think probably the last thing I want to go ahead and include in this, I, again, I know it's getting a little bit longer here, but the bug report tool, this is fairly critical. Um, anytime anybody runs into any issues whatsoever, it's great that you guys want to pop into the discord and say, this is broke. How do I fix it? But that's not enough information for anybody to actually help you. Um, the whole point here is, is that if it's a launcher bug, I need, you know, information on the back end to actually know what's happening on your system. For example, what just happened to me earlier in that installer. Uh, the only way I would know that that actually happened is by using the bug report tool. Um, and so I highly recommend if you run into issues, you know, feel free to shoot this over. If you've logged into Discord uh, using the launcher, it will give you this option on a lot of the different panels to share with Discord. This uploads everything automatically so you don't have to do anything. You just have to kind of write what's going on and it'll provide me hopefully enough information to figure out what's happening. If you go to I am Legion, it gives you some different options. So say for example, you're crashing on the main screen and you don't know why. Uh, several players have run into this already. Turns out to be DirectX 12. Even the launcher bugs, or even the bugs from here wouldn't exactly tell me that, but it will at least allow me enough information to know you know, kind of how to start to ask the questions or where to go from there. Uh, otherwise, it's completely open-ended and it could be a million things. Um, so just wanted to mention that. What that does is that if you're not a part of the Discord community, please make sure to jump on the Discord community. Most of the latest information, most of the things people are running into, you know, different people playing co-op, all of that information can be found on this Discord channel. Um, but basically, if you submit a bug report, it is going to get submitted over to me with a nice summary um, and a easy download for me to uh, pull your data, add it to my game, grab your save game, load in and try to see the exact same thing that you saw so that I can fix it. Um, if I can't replicate the issue on my side, I can't I can't fix the bug. So I hope you guys understand. I just wanted to tack that on to the end of the video here. Um, and as always, you know, a massive shout out to all my supporters. Um, I'm still not able under the Techland uh, EULA and after their unofficial verbal indie uh, or cease and desist, I am not able to create custom content for users um, that is released to only these those individuals and i apologize that that's the case um i can release that content to the community as a whole i am very interested in doing so depending on the request um and so please reach out to me uh if you have any questions but i am looking for more supporters uh this has been a ton of work that's been poured into this project at this point uh and you know i appreciate huge shout out to those of you who have stuck by and continued to support over the years it's been a huge huge benefit and blessing to me and so i greatly appreciate it thank you guys so much for your time i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you enjoyed the new launcher please let me know if you have any questions and uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the discord channel happy gaming